when we work with containers, it's important to know how to separate the container from the data it utilizes. It's so because typically the containers give to us the possibility to have more than one instance of the container running together. But it's important that these containers utilize sometimes the same data source. So there are some ways in the Docker technology to separate the container from the data that is associated with that. And these resources are named volumes or data bindings, as you can see here, a, a bind amount or a volume. So there are advantages from each side, but typically the volumes give to us more advantages than the another kind of ways to, to do the separation. However, each kind of application could have one more appropriate way to utilize our volume or by the mount. In our example today, we are going to use the volume for a database and the by the mount for the application. It's so using the general idea. If the data has to be handled directly by some application, like in our example, the MongoDB, then we could use a volume. On the other hand, if we are going to handle these files manually, like the source code of one application we are developing, so the bind mount could be more interesting. So this is the goal of the vi this video, show to you how to use bind mount and volume and each of these techniques for its own purpose. Before we start to use a container linked to a volume, let's understand how to handle volumes by itself. Volume are data structure that is handled directly by the container, it means by the docker. It means we cannot change these files directly, we do not have access directly to that. If you want to do that, then the bind mount is the most appropriate structure. But now we are going to see one overview of main structures from volume. It's a docker volume. Then from here, we have a set of instructions to list the volumes, to create new volume, to remove one existing volume, and to inspect data from one existing volume. So the LS to list the existing volumes. I have here a lot of volumes in my computer. So let's create now another volume. So we could do now one Docker volume, then instead of LS, we could use Docker volume create, and then the volume name, like here, volume one, okay? So the volume one was created. If now we list the volumes again, we are going to have the volume one here created. Okay. I could inspect data regarding this volume one if I type here the inspect command followed by the volume name that is my case volume one. So here we have data related to this um, volume one. And if we want to delete that, once it's not linked to no container in this moment, we can delete that with the ahem function. So we replace here after volume ahem and then the volume name. And now the volume was removed. So if you list again the volumes, we do not have the volume one anymore. Okay, so these are the overall instructions from volume. And now we're going to do a very important thing. We are going to create one volume and link that to a container. And we are going to do that for our MongoDB image. So first step, create the volume. We already have seen docker create and then docker volume create. And then the name of the volume that will be here, my Mongo volume. This will be the name of the volume that has been created. Now we have it to instantiate one container and link that with the volume and we are going to do that with the parameter minus v so docker run is the command that creates a new container and, and, and run that so here are some parameters like the name of this container in this case will, will be uh, mongo container one so one parameter that is detached as a background service one parameter it will be listening in my local computer port 27, 0, 25, 
and is going to listen in the port 27017, that's the default port for MongoDB, and then now the most important thing, how to link with the volume, that would be minus V, then the volume name, it's here, Mongo volume, and now one important thing, when you want to create one volume to a certain container, we need to know in which folder we would like to do this, this linking between data from the container and the volume. And in MongoDB case, it is in the folder data and then in the folder DB. All information MongoDB handles, save and store and structures and collections is inside this folder. It means when this container we are creating now is going to be destroyed and a new one will be created, using the same volume, the data will remain there. So that's the idea of volumes. We could uh, stop and remove and create new containers, but using the same volume, it's independent. The user do not know the container has changed because the data remains the same. So the last parameter now is the image name that is Mongo. So here it is, our container is created and it's linked with Mongo DB container. Now we have created one container using a volume. Let's connect in this container, insert some data, for then experiment connecting the same volume utilized by this first container, and then see that the data remains because the volume are the same. So if you remember, we have created here one container. We could see the existing containers with Docker container LS, and then that is listening in this port 27025. So, if here we try to connect using MongoDB, it's a MongoDB client here. Then, if we try to connect in our local host at this port that we are, we having a power here, we then are inside this container, inside the Mongo that's running in our container. And let's try just to try to create here some collection like my, my call, and then inside this collection my call. Let's try to insert here some documents in a very simple way. Let's try that. My attribute. attribute. I think it's a comment. I think it's not nice here. Let me try to do that below. I don't know. Yes, this way. Then here my attribute has the value 1. Okay, what's the problem here? Insert, insert not permit why documents contain errors. Maybe it needs this way. Okay, insert. Right, we have then here one document in this container. So what we are going to do now? This container here is the one that's listening in this port, 2500. 27.0.25. So let's stop and try this container and create a new one using the same volume. So let's go there. First of all, we know this container is named Mongo Container 1. So let's co copy this name. And here let's use the comments Docker container stop. And then we are going to stop this container here. Once we have done that, probably it's already out of operation. Okay, if you try here to find something, we are going to receive some error message, not possible to connect because we have stopped the container. So it, it should not work. It's not listening anymore at its port. You see here, it's trying, trying, trying until one error happens. So let's not be here awaiting that to work. Let's go on with our operations. So now we are going to remove the stop container. We are going to use the Docker container him. So this container is out, we do not have it anymore, but the volume still exists. The volume here, if you try docker, container, docker volume, ls, the, the volume still exists. So besides we cannot connect anymore at this container, at this port that does not exist anymore, we could create one second container using the same volume and the data will be there. Let's do that now. Um, okay, let's just copy here the, the instruction we have done when we have created the, the first container linking to this existing volume. 
just let's try to rename that to a different name now j's new name and let's try to do that forwarding another port of course i could use the same because this first one does not exist anymore but we could change that as well but let's keep that okay then the connection will be the same now one second container was created the first container do not exist anymore you can see that here we have mongo container 2 but the one we have removed and then now now the connection will return the connection has no data we see here this error message which was refused before but now if i try to find we are on again because let because now we have make the connection on again maybe i have to reconnect because it has lose the connection so this instance do not work anymore so let's open here again perform a new connection just one moment okay let's go there mongodb and then local roast and then the same port we had before and then it is here our collection is here and our document is here so you see one second container using the same volume we have the same date so our backend with node is done using volumes now let's see some example of application of bind mount so it's good to utilize it when we have legit files that are inside our container so typically it's utilized for or back-end applications or front-end application where it's under development so we could have a container that runs our application in one very specific environment and, and well controlled but then we can change the source files in our own computer with our favorite IDE so uh, in this case the bind mount is interesting so this example now we are going to create one front-end application using the NGX um, image and we are going to link the source folder from NGX with one folder from our local computer. So let's do that now. So the first, now we are not going to use volumes because volume is one thing, bind mount is another thing. Bind mount is to make the connection between one folder in the container with one folder in our local computer. So um, I have created one folder here that's empty now. That's the folder where we are going to make the source code of our application. Just for we have some initial data for testing, we could here then create just one file. Could be then here our index.html um, for, for instance. And then later on, we are going to edit this source code here. But then we have just one empty file. But okay, let's do now already some kind of addition here, just for we could validate if it's working as soon as we make the mapping so just one initial content and then after the container is running we are going to edit that so that will be the benefit of the bind mount is that we could have the container created and then it's running but we can change the files inside that without problem okay so here my file with bind mount okay so we have that already created and saved and okay we have a red one file for testing now let's return and let's create then a new container using docker run this container will be named um, my web app v1 right and then it's going to be also detached. It's going to be listening in our local computer port uh, 991, redirecting to the port 80 from our container. That's where the standard folder from NGX run. And now the bind mouth. We utilize the minus V like volumes, but then we need to place here the full path already directly from our computer so i put came here pop this full path and then replace here um as well so it's going to say okay this folder here will be mapped to and then one specific folder in container um 
Okay, I have we, you have to know what folder you want to, to do this, this link. I have it noted here somewhere. It's no, it's from okay, it's here. So this is the folder where um, Energix store its source file. So we just copy this block of code here. That's under user, under share, under Energix, under HTML. And then now we just need to set the image name that is Energix. Energix. This way. Okay, and now run. Let's see. Okay, it has created our our new container theoretically running over the, under this port. So let's test that. We could try come here, open localhost, and the, then this port we have just informed that is 991. Do you see my file use with bind mount? It means it is linked with this folder here. And okay, I want to edit this file. No problem. We could just come here, edit that, and now we could set here some new content like version 2 with about for this text here and then we could identify that we changed the file in our local computer and automatically this change reflects in container so that's the idea of bind mount So, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Our goal here was to make a clear differentiation between the bind mouth and the volumes. I hope you have enjoyed the examples about using volumes, about using bind mouth, and the advantage of P2 one As we have seen, normally volumes, we cannot edit the content directly, so it's handled exclusively by the application that's running inside the container. When we use bind mount, we could then utilize the edition of source files directly in our local computer, but it's reflected in the container as well. Okay? Thank you for, for your attention. If you have suggestions about this video, just write down at the comments. Thank you for watching. See you next time.